uh, actually a hybrid child of three different cultures. Um, I was brought up in India and the US and in the UK. So actually I think I spent equal amounts of time in all three countries. Coming to Cambridge was accidental almost in the sense that I have taught in the US, I taught at the LSE before I came here, and it was a personal decision, but it was also, I saw exciting possibilities, especially around the fact that sociology here has a multidisciplinary feel to it. After I arrived about six years ago, the department has been through an incredible transformation. and We have people coming from all over, and the work that my colleagues do is so varied. It's not just that we work in all areas of the globe, but also that we are asking questions that are drawn from so many different parts of sociology. And that makes it a singularly exciting place to be. I feel that one of the sort of signature things about Cambridge sociology is the fact that we speak to debates and issues that are happening in so many parts of the world this year of all years has really shown the value of moving in this direction, not least since the rise of a certain kind of Trump and Brexit populism, austerity, um, following on the heels of all of that, an unprecedented pandemic that has actually revealed the sort of the fault lines of many societies, you know, of the kind of inequalities and vulnerabilities that people have been living in for a very, very long time has, have really come to the fore as a result of, of what we've learned about the effects of COVID. One of the most powerful things is the Black Lives Matter movement, which is not new, but certainly what is so interesting is the way in which the murder of George Floyd catalyzed a movement from which there's no turning back. The world has had to really wake up to the existence of systemic racism, the kind of racial injustice that most African Americans in the US live with and people of color across the world live with. We can't turn our backs from it and we cannot justify having a curriculum or pedagogies that don't address these simultaneous crises that we're living in. Uh, and I, I think one of the things about sociology and a critical sociology is that we want students to have the tools to make sense of these things, you know, to really grapple with what does it mean when we say something is structural? What do we mean when we say there's a historical legacy, you know, say of slavery and, you know, what does it mean when we talk about social movements? How do these occur? Why do they occur when they do? Why do some of them leave effects and others don't leave such strong lasting effects? These are the questions I think that actually everyone should be asking, but what we can do in, in sociology is to offer the tools to do sustained and deep research into these questions. And students have really appreciated that. You know, they really felt that sociology has become more than ever a place where they can have a really free and frank discussion about the intersections between racism, sexism, class oppression, and you know, as a result of that, we've had so many productive and really, really powerful, moving sessions and workshops, many of which have been led by students. I think that's one of the really amazing things about the last few years of Sociology at Cambridge, creating a curriculum and pedagogical techniques, working with new pedagogies that really respond to the, the, the world we live in now.